topic of this talk is collective by names, secondary by names that have not been bestowed on the name bearers by themselves. The background is socio-nomastics intended as the study of name usage with respect to socially defined social categories. And that part of anthroponomastics, which encompasses the study of names given to groups of people. Most participants to this conference will find this piece of information redundant since they're already well set in the field of onomastics. But as a newcomer to the field, I've only made uh, incursions up to now. When names are meant to express some characteristic of the name bearer, one often speaks of nicknames, while by names seems to be a subordinate term for both negatively and positively charged and neutral names basically a hypernym. I use by names here to highlight the fluidity in current uses of the name I've researched. Uh, literature tells us that a by name can have the function either of creating affinity or of raising social barriers, hence the reflection that by names are a mirror of society. Whereas traditionally by names were unofficial naming practices, the name I will focus on Chav is evidence um, that currently by names are, uh, can be endorsed by institutions, all the while sharing the functions of traditional by names. Indeed, uh, they may provide a sense of in group solidarity and they represent a strategy for dominance or for enforcing social control. Also, the child cases I've researched highlight the practice of juvenile by name giving as being in contrast with adult name giving. Moreover, they provide evidence that de etymologization uh, de of naming practices happens even uh, with by names. In short, this talk will focus on the multifaceted issue of variety in onomastics. Names are not static, but variable and changing. In addition to being interesting for onomatics for all these reasons, Chav presents itself as particularly worthy of attention due to its persistence. Youth culture and terminology change fast, and Chav has long passed its peak usage. However, surprisingly, it seems to have maintained a fascinating amount of staying power. To make the aim of the talk explicit, I will examine the strategies of work behind Chav as an offensive epithet in the first decade of the 21st century, and the events which later caused it to acquire edginess and subcultural capital. And I will discuss Chav in the light of recent reappropriations. The perspective adopted uh, is that of linguistic anthropology, which views language as interdependent with culture and social structures, therefore foregrounding the significance of modes other than speech and writing in the study of how language shapes communication, constructs social identities and group memberships, and generates ideologies, thereby impacting the lives of individuals and communities. In the first decade of the 21st century, uh, Chab was a pejorative epithet for usually young people whose appearance and demeanor were perceived as showing um, what was commonly seen as a lack of taste and education, as well as antisocial behavior. It became particularly relevant in a period when previous markers of class, such as access to education and consumer goods, would appear to have become less certain. The media perpetuated this narrative of Chav as a signifier for class, status, or cultural capital, though the label virtually disappeared from the public space in the second decade of the 21st century, only to reappear online in 2020. My research was carried out examining the more recent viral phenomenon of TikTok chat check videos and analyzing the reappropriations of the supposedly linguistic features, mannerisms, music, and positioning of chat culture. The data were collected through ordinary Google searches performed in the summer of 2020 when chat check videos were going viral. To critically engage uh, with these videos, uh, data presentation strategies currently in use within traditional of a, within the tradition of embodied sociocultural linguistics were stretched to integrate text, audio, and dynamic visuals. The limited length of present TikTok videos, three to sixty seconds, made data handling manageable for manual analysis. 
about spatiotemporal coordinates. The most widely accepted hypothesis is that Chubb came from Romani and picked in use in 2004. In 2006, Oxford English Dictionary already included the adjective chubby. Brewer's Dictionary mentions a possible connection with the northeastern dialect term chaba. Applied to any young person of unemployed or lower class background exhibiting a particular subcultural style, Chava also came to be linked in field, in field work conducted in the Nailton neighborhood uh, to a hybrid combination of the allegedly archetypal lower class names Sharon and Trevor and Chawala, a term designating Indian tea servants. Also, Chava is apparently attested to have emerged in the early 1990s after the Tyneside riots. And this makes room for an analogy with the 2011 London riots, which Jones refers to as Chubb riots. Chubb quickly gained wide acceptance and became familiar to many, possibly due to media hammering of lengthy descriptions of Chubbs. Frequency was accompanied by productivity. Lipka refers to the very fine effects of words as hypostatization. Uh, he describes it as the phenomenon by which the existence of a word implies the existence of a single entity denoted by it. Nouns tend to profile conceptual content as things, as object-like entities with neat boundaries in space and a stable existence across time. This property of nouns makes them particularly good candidates for reification. It is interesting to see that Chubb also stimulated, already earlier on, forms of reappropriation. Following these timid attempts, Chubb virtually disappeared from mass media usage. The release of Chubb's uh, The Demonization of the Working Class is a book-length investigation into the political and economic reasons which led to the alienation of the working class in contemporary Britain. It came to represent a useful signpost that pointed to watershed awareness. I'm going to use notions other than those used within lexicology to account for the phenomenon by which the existence of a word implies the existence of a single entity denoted by it. More precisely, I will make reference to the concept of enregisterment. We have seen that the origins of Chav may be traced back to the Romani dialect word for small child. More recent usage in colloquial expressions is attested in an area popular with gypsy travelers since the early 19th century, North Kent in the southeast of England. More precisely, in 2003, the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary connected the name to Chatham Girls. Uh, one wonders how much the picture of Chatham Girls emerging in the Observer the previous year weighed on this decision. The description the frequent, through frequent reverberations in other media certainly displayed the potential to turn into what Aga calls an unregistered emblem. The social order is produced through repeated acts of positioning and evaluation. I have highlighted for you um, the emblematic elements in the chart picture. Clothing, accessories and language are diacritics or prosthetic extensions, or more practically, the gateway to entry into chapness. Chatham girls become real-time instantiations of such abstract qualities shaped by conventions as tawdriness and promiscuity. In short, the description potentially makes Chav an, an, an unregistered emblem or trope of the cheap tawdry slut. Qualities projected onto social categories emerge from and are harnessed to political project. A good number of studies focusing on intersection of gender, sexuality and class show how discursive constructions of femininity appear to vilify working class women. We can only hypothesize the small scale encounters that have shaped the larger scale processes leading to the emergence of CHAB as, as a semiotic register, but studying the social semiotic activities through which CHAB has gradually come to be expressed and valorized may appear to be slightly easier. 
The TV show Little Britain has often been used as a shorthand within serious debates about the decline of social and educational standards. Um, and a YouGov poll in 2006 revealed that most people working in television thought Vicky Pollard was an accurate representation of Britain's white working class. Public sphere representations do not directly or worse deliberately determine individual views. The uptake of messages by audiences involve processes of evaluative response that permit many degrees of freedom. An individual can throw up on a register, but its most widespread social consequences depend on how such uptakes are incorporated into institutions that reproduce it. In our specific case, an unfortunate, an unfortunate series of events led to identifying the fictional character of Vicky Pollard with real Vicky Pollard. This uh, also, certainly not deliberately, once again, spurred more job hate. hate. During a 2011 BBC Two's discussion about the London riots, historian David Starkey notoriously brought the point that Chubb represents everything about whiteness that the middle classes are not well into the open, claiming that whites have become black. Chubb has been progressively recontextualized in diverse figures and events. Chubbs with spending power have unquestionably contributed to the emergence of a scheme of counter values in some uptakes. The burgeoning of such counter values was accelerated by the unprejudiced portrayal of Chubbness in movies such as Centrinians and Fish Tank. Director Andrea Arnold had already um, produced a typically non-judgmental depiction of the Chab Mam in her Oscar-winning short film, Wasp. This Chab counter values acquired wider circulation and started articulating a proper Chab counter discourse with the broadcasting of Misfits, a low-budget science fiction television show which aired between 2009 and 2013. Misfits teaches a group of young offenders during community service who develop supernatural powers after they are struck by lightning during an electrical storm. While denying the project any specific political agenda, the drama's uh, creator, Howard Overman, does admit uh, that he viewed his characters kindly when conceiving them, probably also in response to the channel producer's patronizing request to make the show working class so the working class audiences would not feel excluded. The misfits anti-heroes, some very distinctly chubby in their speech, dress and anti-social behavior, helped Chubb achieve covert prestige in the UK. Chubb has recently re-emerged on TikTok, a platform where videos are edited through the user's original assemblage of bits drawn from a wide variety of sounds and, so and song snippets, sometimes adding filters and special effects. I have focused on Chubb check videos because many of their creators post from outside the UK. They are not familiar with the concepts, so they approach it through approximations. If the first two videos posted under the heading Chub Check feature supposedly Chub individuals unaware of being filmed, those immediately following are videos of users who have manipulated their appearance to prime a stereotype. They are made up or clothed as Chubs and offer their fictitious Chub selves to the judgment of other users who are invited to assess the degree of performed Chubness. The, video pro the videos produced would seem to be the fruit of a search for contact started by the first video creators with the apparent wish to orient such users towards an understanding of Chab. UK-based Chab Czech performers do not simply represent Chabs, they enact them, drawing upon multiple resources, language, graphics, gaze, kinesics, proxemics, and their ability to pull apart and put back together aspects of speech and the body. They stylize Chubb through a creative juxtaposition of Chubb's stylistic features. 
However, properties and values appear to significantly change from one BU to the next, particularly due to the, lo uh, to the local construct reaching well beyond its national context. Whereas the Chav uh, is constructed as an individual uh, inhabiting specific, specific places of a city by some UK users, the urban fringe and the department store, they become metonymic of the whole UK for other users, who sometimes also compare and contrast Chavs to individuals whom they perceive to share similar features in theirs or other cultures. Individuals become acquainted with registers through socialization processes. From the perspective of non-UK users, the effort is to figure out the general category in which Chubb should be placed. Some formulations remain tacit presuppositions of the Chubb sign use. Some others become explicit with their users deliberately utilizing the space to resist Chubb representations, which they perceive to be more mainstream, in a very overt manner. Quantum theory uses the notion of entanglement to explain how particles of energy and matter can interact with each other, regardless of how far apart they are. Each of the chat check users is not merely engaging with other TikTokers. They are also entangled in a larger whole. The existence of complex forms of entanglement in visuality may help to explain previous overt forms of non-conformist chat pride culture, where British young people from affluent or middle-class families deliberately identifying themselves with chavs in order to increase peer respect. The view of Chav is indexical of a temporary phase in most people's lives, which emerges from, uh, which emerges from some of the Chav check videos, may stem from one such entanglement in visuality. It is supported by the counter discourse of misfits, an expression of the need to confess past evidence of one's Chavness and recognize signs of its presence in others while presenting it as a form of effective authenticity, which involves calling attention to rather than concealing imperfections. Is it possible to detect processes of class formation or redefinition in this effective investment? These TikTok videos would seem to point to the emergence of new, more advanced, more socially reticulated forms of class subjectivity. Class subjectivities more open to otherness and international in outlook, all the while coexisting with traditional mainstream ones. Chav and these new class subjectivities bootstrap each other into existence, mutually being influenced and influencing each other in a reciprocal process. How does this further our understanding of Chav and similar by names? If we limit our focus to the name Chav, it currently appears to be turning into a floating signifier, with Chav non-Chav boundary making constantly reproduced and renegotiated. If we widen the focus to include by names as attempts to reify, to reify class formations by criteria of disposable income and the like, a study which does not take into account variety issues and also modes other than speech and writing fails utterly to account for the manner in which class identities are created and transformed through the discursive interactions in which they live. Um, I was, if I, if I may, I was wondering if in the data that you collected, you noticed um, differences in terms of, you know, geography within the, uh, well, within England and, well, the British Isles, if it's more uh, common in some parts of England, or if it's been, let's say, reappropriated um, in, in some specific areas of, of Britain. Well, it's basically in uh, all over, all over, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the country. Okay. Uh, and uh, the reappropriation, again, well, it depends, you know, on the specific community. And I'd actually say on the specific, you know, identity. Uh, 
Mm. So um, it's, it's, you know, it's become um, viral. Uh, so, you know, it's spreading outside the UK right now, but it acquires, you know, completely different meanings in, uh, in other countries, particularly uh, when it has to do uh, with, you know, young speakers, young, uh, young users, young TikTok users. That's why I was saying, you know, uh, it's age related. Um, because let's say that the semantic prosody is totally different uh, when it applies to young people, but mostly outside the UK, because, you know, within the UK, well, it very much depends on, uh, you know, on the specific person and the kind of experiences that person has had, because, of course, you know, the, um, the name has been primed with certain connotations, uh, you know, according to how you were raised and, of course, according to your own uh, dispositions, inclinations, views uh, and so reactions, let's say. To the kind of uh, uh, to the to the way you were raised, but outside the UK, you know, um, I said, um, uh, you know, this was clearly uh, really the reason why I decided to uh, undertake this kind of research. What was interesting about this was that you know people from outside the UK who had not been primed with this specific semantic. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, connotation. Uh, they they uh, were approaching this term and using it because you know when it comes to TikTok, it's actually uh, you know experiencing, doing, enacting uh, the specific thing that you are um, talking about, writing about, and so on and so forth. So they were using chab without actually knowing all that came before. So, uh, you know, they, they approached, they, they um, constructed the meaning of chav through approximations. So all of the different, uh, you know, previous indexicalities and new indexicalities, they are more evident because of this, because, you know, it's a work in progress thing. You know, they, they are constructing chab together. Um, sorry, uh, Luisa says, my question is related to the possible implications of the use of this label on TikTok, for example. Uh, well, who knows? Um, you know, the, the point is, as, uh, as Asifaga says, uh, the point is what really happens in the, you know, uh, in the local uh, situations in which Chav is used. Uh, well, clearly the way institutions uh, use chab is is meaningful and you know it has um enormous uh, uh crucial trickle down uh, effects on reality but by now you know people know that they can't use chab with a negative connotation because um, as i said after the publication uh, of the book that uh, whose cover i showed you in uh, 2011 there was you know a, a complete uh, change uh, of um, uh, approach to Chab in the UK. Um, though, of course, I've got to say that still, still, uh, some people use it um, in a very um, derogatory way. Uh, I mean, quite recently, just to mention something, quite recently, um, uh, Saeed Jaib, uh, you know, he's been renamed Chavid, you know, the, the British politician. He's been renamed Chavid. Uh, why so? Because he said that he didn't like the opera, but he preferred to watch a Star Wars movie instead. You know, if you had to choose between going to the opera and, uh, you know, watching a Star Wars movie, then, you know, well, uh, he preferred the Star Wars movie. So, you know, uh, other politicians started calling him Chavid instead of, uh, you know, Chavid. So, um, you see, uh, I mean, it, it, it very much depends on the person. I mean, uh, people do know by now, uh, they are aware of the fact that if they use the word Chav in that specific way, uh, well, um, other people will know where they stand politically. 
that's uh, that's the point. So yes, uh, you know the, the possible implications. Let's say on the way it is being used, Louisa, right now, and uh, what I actually um, uh, say, uh, you know, in, in this book which is coming out, uh, is that this might have um, consequences on the way people approach child, particularly young people. So it's it's acquiring. Uh, edginess uh, and uh, you know what's um, specific to TikTok is the fact that uh, because it's a semiotic assemblage okay I don't know whether you're familiar with TikTok but basically what users do they uh, take a song snippets from a, a specific source and they put it together with uh, you know it could be a piece of writing uh, an image so what happens is that uh, the meaning of chub becomes uh, very opaque. So even those users uh, who uh, created these objects, because you know to start with, uh, you know the, the first users they created these objects because they wanted to make fun of chubs. But actually, you know, when you look at these objects, you do realize that some of them, you know, they are not uh, using these objects uh, just for uh, consumption, but also as, um, um, you know, to, to experience a different identity. That's so what I through, meant. That's less yes. a social connotation, maybe. Yeah. So basically, you know, uh, I mean, uh, it, it slips out of their hands. So, you know, even those people who had, who were using Chab uh, in a negative way to start with, well, uh, you know, they create content uh, that produces different effects on other people. That's yeah, very fascinating. <laughs> yes, there is a comment here. I understand that Chavs are class marked, but are they associated with any political perspective? Okay, do you mean, uh, Yemizi, do you mean um, Chavs themselves or the people who, you know, look at Chavs in a negative way? Uh, because Chavs themselves, well, you know, who knows? Because the point, Chavs themselves, you know, the, the point is by now, it's difficult to say who Chavs are. Because like I said, you know, think of Chavs are whoever you don't want to be. Okay, those people who look at chavs negatively, well, it doesn't matter. There can be some chav in you, even though you belong to uh, the same social class as they are, even though you, um, you know, um, you went to the same, um, um, you know, schools they went to. Okay, uh, I mean, Blair himself has been, uh, uh, you know, renamed the chav. Um, because of certain political choices, because of coming to Italy and sharing uh, Silvio Berlusconi's villa when he came over to Italy. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to say. Chavs themselves, who are Chavs themselves? Mm. Um, so to start with, it was the white working class, uh, but a white working class which was tainted white. It was a tainted white. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, it could be left wing, but, you know, like I said, I mean, if we say this, if we use these uh, parameters, uh, then, you know, we lose sight of the fact that Chubb can be anyone. And Chubb objects can be de chubbed and they can become, um, you know, trendy they can be appropriated, culturally plundered, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I just wanted to really quick point out that I, I first saw this term on uh, sites where mostly young women discuss baby names. And uh, the English language sites have many posters from all the English speaking countries. And the British posters would say they didn't like a name because it was a Chav name. It took me yeah. quite a while to figure out what they meant by that. And the Americans, if they want to say something bad about a name uh, in the same way, will usually call it a trailer trash or a white trash, you know, yeah, name. Exactly. And yeah. uh, I think Chad 
is sort of more redeemable, you can sort of identify with it because it only means, you know, membership in a certain group, whether it was originally a dislike group or not, but you sort of can't re redeem trash, you know, in the same way that you can yeah. redeem the word Chad, you know. True, true. And yes, names, proper names, they also are prosthetic extensions, as Aga says. Shabo and Trevor, as I said, they are identified as Chab names in, uh, in the UK.